All right, folks, today we're going to take a look at how we can use the Info Ohio and EBSCO host tools to uh, simplify the research process, specifically how we can use the research results within EBSCO host to help create our works cited pages and annotated bibliographies without having to worry too much about the MLA format. So the first thing we need to do is go to a result list in EBSCO host. So in this fictitious um, assignment, I've been given the task of researching school uniforms. Uh, and so I decided to choose, and you can look at this uh, result information in a couple places in the advanced search field. I'm looking at school uniforms and academic benefits. If you go down to my uh, search terms, you'll see the same search terms there. Plus, you'll see the limiters I added. First of all, remember, full text. That's a must. Not every article within EBSCOhost is a full scanned article. If you can't read the whole article, it's not useful. Click full text. The second thing I did is I limited the publication dates to 21st century articles from 2001 to 2016. And then I chose specific article types. In my fictitious assignment, I was required to have academic journals, newspaper articles, and magazines. And so I chose those resource types down below. So that's my summary of what I was searching for and how I limited my search, leaving me with 14 uh, search uh, results. Now, over here in the search results, you can also see the kind of article is academic journal, news, periodical. Periodical is just a librarian term for a magazine. It's something that's published periodically, like let's say every other week. Um, or every month or every couple of months. So it's something, it's a magazine other than an academic journal. So I've got three types of sources found in my results, which is good. So how do I use this? Well, the first thing you do, click on your link to the source itself, the article itself. Now, what's a must is you have to read the articles. Uh, you certainly can't get away with um, just reading the summary here. You need to read the full article. So let's get that out of the way. Now, let's pretend I've read all these particular articles. Okay, and I've selected a handful that I want to use for my assignment, starting with this one. This uh, article by Deborah uh, Viadero that was in Education Week, which is a journal. Here under the source line, you can find the volume number. Um, you can find the page numbers, the year and month which it was published. You can see some descriptors, give you some topics that are in that article, and then the abstract is the summary. So, and I've clicked on the link, I've read the full article. Um, you can get the link over here, full HTML text. Now, here's what we do at this point when we've done that legwork. I know I want to save this article for future use so I can incorporate it in my project. So we use these tools that are over here on the right-hand side, specifically our email tool. This will send us a full, the link to the full article, plus we can get the formatting started for us for our Works Cited page. How do we do it? Well, first things first, type your email address into the Email To field, and then this is the most important step. On the right-hand side, click Citation Format. Now, right now, it's default for this ABNT, Brazilian National Standards. Well, that's not what we want. We want MLA. English Department requires you to use the MLA format. But you'll notice there are other popular formats here. APA, or the American Psycho Psychological Associations, um, the Chicago or uh, Turabian, they're the same, same format. I believe History uses that as a format. Um, but for our purposes, we want MLA, the Modern Language Association. Click that. Make sure you click that. If you don't, you're not going to get access to the benefits here. And then click Send. Okay. Continue. Now, let's go ahead and open up a Word document. Let's create a new document. Now, let's set this up for our Works Cited page. MLA, of course, requires in the top left-hand corner that you put a heading. Every MLA heading must include the name. Let's make sure we put your name first, student name. Underneath that goes the teacher name, 
followed by the class name, and then finally the due date. MLA does also require that this is double spaced. So go ahead and highlight that text, go to double space. Let's just make sure we're not adding extra spaces. It kind of looks a little bit more than double space to me. No, okay, we're good. And then we're fine. Of course, you're gonna put your name, my name, and so on and so forth here. After the due date, hit enter, center, and then we type works cited the title of our actual document. Enter one more time, and then let's make sure we go back over to the left margin. Okay, now we're ready for information. So we emailed ourselves that first article. Let's go into our email, and there it is, EBSCOhost email result. You'll notice here we have the works cited info. Just go ahead and copy that. Take it over to your Word document and then paste it. Now, we're not done yet. We do need to clean this up. The first thing you'll notice is that uh, this uh, entry is not on the left margin like it's supposed to be. That's easy enough. Simply backspace it over. You'll also notice that um, works cited pages are supposed to be double spaced. This clearly is not double spaced. Simple enough again. Highlight the entry, go to our spacing options, choose your double space. Everything is working really well now. Okay, now let's finish um, the spacing formatting before we do anything else. Remember, MLA works cited pages require that the first line of every source stays on the left margin but every line following it needs to move over. We need to indent it by five spaces. If we use the old typewriter or on the computers, it's just as easy to do one tab button. So we go to that second line. Now pay attention to what happens when I hit the tab button. Okay. The first line didn't stay put on the left margin. That's not what I want. Why did that happen? Well, it's a really simple concept. In word processors like uh, Microsoft Word, when you're typing your text, as you approach the end of the first line, your text is going to automatically wrap around to the next line. Uh, imagine um, that this, this text was sort of going around this uh, pole, if you will. As it gets to the end, it's got to wrap behind that pole to get to the other side again. That's what text wrap kind of is. So we need to break that text wrap though, because if I hit indent on the second line, it's actually connected to the first line. So the computer thinks I want everything indented, which clearly I don't. So how do we fix that? Put your cursor at the beginning of the second line. So in this case, in front of the word evidence and then hit enter. Now you'll notice here, it did jump down. We'll fix that because we don't want that much space there. But most importantly, We've now separated the first line from the second line, and I can tab it over without changing the first line. And I'll just go down to EBSCO hosts line and tab that over as well. Okay, we're not done yet. We need to get rid of this extra space. So highlight those first two lines, go back up to your spacing options, go down to line spacing options. What we need to do is get the computer not to add a space between paragraphs. It thinks we want extra space there, which we don't. Just click that box and then click OK. And now we've got a nice, clean double space. So formatting visually looks perfect. Let's just double check a couple of things here. In EBSCO host, even though they do a really good job making sure all the info, uh, all the information is, is formatted accurately for you, you know, I can't help but think that the people who are doing all of this data entry are probably making a little more than minimum wage. So they're probably not being as accurate as they could be. Places you want to be careful about. Look at names. Make sure the names are, are formatted correctly. Uh, for example, you need the last name comma first. I have seen it flipped. Just fix that. Make sure you make sure Deborah, the first name, goes second. We want last names out here. Uh, I've seen where the names were all caps. Well, we don't type names that way. We capitalize the first letter of the, of the first name, first letter of the last name. Make sure you catch that. Um, double check the title of the article. I've seen all caps and I've seen all lowercase. 
Well, remember, when we are writing titles, we always capitalize the, uh, the important words of the title. We don't capitalize prepositions. We don't capitalize conjunctions. So in this case, of and but need to be lowercase. So this looks good. So just double check those elements for accuracy. And this looks good. Okay, let's go get our next source. So we go back over to our results, back to result list, and let's just go ahead and pick a couple other articles. So we took a, an academic journal. Remember, we're required to have a newspaper. So let's go ahead and um, I'm skipping some of these newspapers because they don't have um, author names, which isn't a big deal, but uh, let's just make sure this is a little bit easier to pay to, to see what's happening. So we'll take Jessica Durando's Ken. We're going to email, type our email in, go over to citation format. Don't forget this one. Students forget it all the time. And then when they cut and paste the info, it's not an MLA format. And they get nailed for that. So be careful. So we'll take that newspaper article. Let's go ahead and get one of those other newspaper articles that didn't have an author's name, and I'll show you the difference between the two. We'll grab this one, email it, go to citation format, MLA, send, continue, go back to our result list, and we still need a magazine for our made-up assignment. Let's take this one. Click it. Again, we're pretending we've read all these articles. Don't try to skimp there. It'll really show in your research if you don't read the information. Citation format, MLA, email. Okay, now I can go into my inbox and pull out those other articles. All right, so we'll take Jessica Durando's piece first. Again, copy. Now, notice right away, we know Jessica's a first name. This particular article doesn't have the name formatted correctly. We gotta fix that, but that's easy. Let's go to our document. Durando is her last name, right? We know that comes before V. So let's just go ahead and put it there. Again, just like we did before, we need to um, end up pull that back to the left margin. Let's fix this name while we're at it. So Durando should be in front of Jessica, comma, and we just fix our punctuation, okay? Now, we didn't see this on the last particular last, last source, but notice this big gap here. We don't want that. We need to fill this gap in. Why is it there? Because this is all seen as one giant word. Um, and Microsoft Office Word will not separate that uh, unless it absolutely has to, has to. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to find a place to break this hyperlink so that it fits up here. There's no science to this. It's, it's all guesswork. So I'm going to come down and, and maybe try it at the com. Let's see if that works. You just hit spacebar. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, let's back it up to EBSCO host. Just keep the period with the EBSCO host. Ah, perfect. Okay, so now we've got that set up. Let's go ahead and double space it. And now let's do our indenting. Hit tab. Oh, I forgot to break the text of the line, line, the text wrap. So let's undo that. Do that on purpose because I know people are going to naturally forget to do that. So remember, we go to the beginning of that second line. We hit enter. Oh, let's try that one more time, shall we? We go back. Oh, it took me to the hyperlink. Be careful that you're not on a hyperlink. Um, that becomes a problem. And we'll hit enter. Now I need to put a space in here, I think, before it's going to let me do that. Yeah, it thinks I'm in the hyperlink. Okay, well, let's do this. Let's go ahead and highlight that and simply remove the hyperlink. If you do a right click, you will see a hyperlink option and then remove that. We really don't want. Um, needs to be live links anyway. There we go. And so now we can indent and indent again. Now again, remember we need to fix this. So highlight, go to line spacing options, don't add that space between paragraphs. And that's nice and clean. 
And let's just backspace that up so we have all double spacing. Okay, well, before we skip, um, before we go to the next sort, double check everything else um, in the titles. We fix the name, look at the title of the article, that looks good. All right, everything looks, looks fine. Let's get our next article. Go back to our inbox. Okay, I'm just deleting that because I don't. I know I don't need it. Okay, here's our other newspaper article. Now this one doesn't have an author. That's not a problem. If a lot of newspapers don't give the author credit, unless they've been around a while, they're just staff writers. So what do we do in terms of placing it in our works cited page? Well, since we don't have an, an author, we use the title of the article where we normally would have used the author's name. So if you notice, uh, two for-profit college, our schools, I have put it between the Durando and the Viadero. T would be between the D and the V. So that's how you work that. Okay, let's go ahead and double space. Let's fill this gap the same way we did before. Again, we just got to guesstimate how much um, of this text can fit in this space. So I'm going to go ahead and just move my cursor over. Let me see if I can keep the com in there. No, nope, too much. Let's back it up. Still too much. Let's back it up beyond the search. Good, that does it. Okay, now, and let's go ahead and just get rid of this hyperlink real fast because I think we're going to run into the same problem as before. Right click, hyperlink remove the hyperlink. Okay, now we'll hit enter to break the text wrap. Now, it just sort of blinked a little bit. That's okay. It did break the text because when I hit tab, everything will move the way I want it. And then hit your tab again. Let's clean up the space by backspacing. Perfect. So now you see we've got our three sources in here in alphabetical order as required by MLA. We've double checked. Let's, well, let's double check this one. Make sure all of our punctuation is in place, our capitalization is done correctly, we're in good shape. All we really did here was copy, paste, and then reformat. But make sure you are following those MLA requirements. And EBSCOhost can be a great tool to help you get this done quickly and accurately.